sound out of it. Oh, okay. Um, I, our guest today, uh, I just saw him at Queen Emma Summer Palace, and I was so excited. Said, hey, would you mind coming to talk to my class? And uh, he agreed. So uh, the way today is going to work is it's going to be kind of like when we have oil here. I'm going to kind of let you do it, whatever you want. Uh, I know I've asked you guys to prepare questions. Uh, when you have your questions, perhaps I'll be the runner with the mic. Um, for those of you that have questions, I'll bring them up. It seems like we have a lot of slack. Um, those of you, if it's somewhere, you can just kind of help move the cord around. Um, so they are filming this. We're very fortunate to have them filming this because uh, Kamal Kamp will agree to allow us to film, to kind of share. Yeah, as composers, oftentimes it's, it's an opportunity we have to share some of the, or dispel some of the things either that people may think songs are about, or, or just help to uh, share the song with them. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, I'm going to stop that now. Yeah, thank you. So, um, how's about a hand for our guest artist? Aloha. Thank you. Mahalo anui loa ya oko pakahi a pau. Mahalo ya oi no ke kono ana mai, no ke i a hai o lelo, e pili ana no ka umau mele i haku i hoai. En mahalo ke a kua, no kona ike, no kona ulu kau. Nui ko umahalo no ke akua no kona kokua mai ana i au i ka hakua no ke i mau mele na ke akua no ka ike ka ulukau ke kokua ke ka ko'o. Thank you for having me. And I always like to begin by giving acknowledgement yeah, to ke akua for the wisdom and the knowledge and the inspiration for writing mele. And of course, Na kini kupuna no kala ko ko kua mai ana iau na la ko no i ho vehe vehe ho ike mai iau i ke ia kuleana ke ia hana nui o kahaku mele ana and of course to my grandparents and my teachers who are again very inspirational for revealing and showing to me this uh, responsibility of haku mele. Uh, today, I'd like to do three things. First, I'd like to share some mele, a little bit about me, and then I'd like to show me a whole different, different aspect of me, and then I'd like to open the floor for questions. And the last part, I would like to share three mele that will be released very soon, I think mid-November, by my nephew, Mr. Sean Na'au'au. So, how did I come here? And I'm very happy to be here and see all of you. We were at Queen Emma Summer Palace. And he asked me about a line from a song that I wrote called Poliahu. And Poliahu was written a while back. Yeah? And what was that line that you asked me about? Meha Meha. And you know, this, this song, you, okay, so you know the word hakumele, yeah? Haku is to braid, yeah? And haku is to weave. And when you think of lei haku, there are always three, three braid, three ply, yeah? Ka'akolu. That's how you haku a lei, three ply. So from way back when, yeah, my kupuna gave me the challenge. You can haku mele. You have to haku three ply. E likipu me ka haku wano okale, three ply. You use lai. You use maia for your backing, whatever you choose to use. Elike pu me kahakuano o na hua olelo, mai ka iloa, nani loa iloko, o ka olelo Hawaii. So you take those beautiful words and, like a laymaker, you're going to weave them three ply. Well, what does that mean? It means that your mele should have at least three kauna, three different stories to share about that mele. One that is the literal translation. Yeah? Two, the one you want to share with the people. Three, the one you keep close to your heart. That is the inspiration of the mele. Does everybody have to know the deep meaning? Of course not. The composer has to know that. So 
what is shared with the people is the literal meaning and the story. Yeah? So, ka'akolu, you haku ka'akolu, three ply. So, when he asked me the question, so that day I shared with him one of the very deep meanings of this song. The song, how many of you know the song? Vaimaka o poli ahu, ika eha ake aloha. That eha belongs to the high chiefess Kekui Apo Iva. You see, on the big island of Hawaii, and we are tied into this story being descendants of Kaha Opulani. Kaha Opulani was a wet nurse to. Kamehameha e kahi, kamehameha pai ea. So when he was taken away, he was taken away by kaha opulani. So what happened? In the song, I'm trying to reflect the feelings, the deep feelings of sadness and sorrow and longing of kekui apo iva for her son. So in the tradition of Hanai, the first child, is given away to be raised. Being raised means they would take their child so that they will know how to mahi ai and how to lavai a. They would have to learn the things the makaai nana did because when they became the king, they had to know how the people survive. So their education started first with the poem makaai nana. They were raised by them. They, were, they had to learn how to work the aina. Okay. So when her child was taken away, that was Kamehameha, she wept. Vaimaka, she wept. She cried. She was in a lot of pain. That's her first child. And she would not have the opportunity to nurse her first child she would not have the opportunity to fondle in her arms her first child. She would not have all of that. Someone else would have that. And her comment at that time was, for the rest of my life, I will live like the goddess Poliahu at the top of Mauna Kea, alone. And that was the inspiration of how I wrote this song. And that third verse, Kaumai kahalia aloha O kava mamua pu olo kavai onohi Iku umeha meha And that's the key to why the song was written. It was written to honor that moment in time when Kekui Apo Iva had to give her son Kamehameha in the tradition of Hanai. And that's how this conversation started and uh, being able to come here and share the music. So how long have I been writing music or poetry? Since the fourth grade. How old am I now? 65. That's a lot of years. That's a lot of years of poetry. And, uh, you know, makahanaka ike. The more you do it, the more ike you get. When you stop doing it, the ike kind of disappears, so you cannot stop. So when you're inspired, you always have to write. And here's my little helper, probably a couple hundred songs on here that I still have to work on. And I'm always writing. This is the newest CD. I think there is a total of 15 or more, and a lot of it is not released in Hawaii. It's released in foreign countries, and I think that is because at this point they have the most interest in my poetry style and, again, my music. So Kimokea was just asking me, who is playing the music? All Japanese musicians. I work with them because they want to work with me. They asked me to work with me, and I said, okay, let's go. So, from this CD, if you can play this song, and song number two, Okalei Lehuala. So, what is my greatest inspiration today? Grandchildren. At one time, I wrote about children. Now I have grandchildren. 
and I write these songs about all of them. I also have great grandchildren and I've written songs about them. And these are the things that inspire me. You can go a little bit louder. I just want you to listen and imagine me singing to my granddaughter. I'm saying you are the lay, that lehua lay, lay of lehua blossoms, the lay that I hold close to my heart, this beloved lay, this precious lay. And you're carried here with such great care. This lay that I will never forget, that I lift up into the elegance, into the beauty of the sky. You know, this word he he means beauty, elegance, regalness. And that's how I see my grandchildren, especially this granddaughter. And I'm enchanted by the lehua blossoms of Hopoi that glow brilliant with such beauty that are so intense in color. So my desires are burning inside for you, my adornment. My lei of lehua blossoms, this beauty that never fades. So her name is Kuupulehua Kauhiehie Okalani. And uh, that name came to me before she was born. And I remember I was performing in Japan and my son called me and said, Dad, I need a name. I'm going to have a baby. I said, oh, how sweet. So I said, name the baby this. Call her Kuupulehua Kauhiehie Okalani. So, oh, I'm so happy he hung up. Five minutes later, he called me that. What if it's a boy? Okay. But he had a girl. That's Ku'upua. And this is one of the songs that I've written for her. But again, as I mentioned before, all of my grandchildren are very unique inspirations. I look at them. I study them. I'm intrigued by them. I'm amazed by them. They are all reflections of my children. They are all reflections of me. Why would I not want to capture that in my song? I think, I think people get confused about inspiration sometimes when they're right. I like to stay very simple, very simple, and focus on exactly what I feel in my heart. And I have to say this before I end today. If you are an aspiring songwriter, don't write because you want to win a prize. That's not the reason you write. Don't write because you want that hit song throughout Hawaii. Nei. That's not the reason you write. You write because you love to write. I went one step further. I write because I want to honor God. Because keakua is so maika'i. And everything I do, I hope, is a reflection. No kona malama mayana iau, no kona ho'o maika'i mayana iau, no kona malama mayana iau, no kona ho'o la mayana iau. Because he cares for me, he guides me, he protects me, he inspires me. So 
through that kind of inspiration that we call ulukau, yeah, where they sit on you and they assist you in the process. I have so great mahalo nui for that process, but there is responsibility in that, that you have to live a life of goodness so that that flow continues, yeah, that flow from above, nokaluna, uh, akalalo continues, because that's where that inspiration comes from. So again, if you want to write, write from your heart. Write about the things that are familiar to you. Write about the people you love. Start with grandpa and grandma. Start with your parents. Your brothers and sisters. Your friends, your children, your grandchildren. Because, you know, when we say the word ohana, yeah, that's all of that. So, you know, try to stick within those perimeters and write from your love. And maybe one day, one of those songs will be a hit. Well, good. But don't make that the reason you write. Because hakumele, weaving these poems, these songs, yeah? is like a diary. When you hear each one, when someone sings it and you hear it, when you sing it, all the memories. Yeah? All these beautiful memories come back to me. I mean, even when I talk, I want to cry. When I listen to the music, I want to cry because every moment that inspired that music, when you hear it, it all comes back. And that's why I continue to do it. Okay, so you heard one part of me. Now I'm going to pay you another part of me. <laughs> this was recorded in 1998. In 1998, I caused big controversy with this kind of music, but I had an intent. The intent was to reach out to the young people and draw them into the Olelo Hawaii, to let them know whatever genre of music you choose, do your best. Kulia Ikanu'u, strive for the top. No matter what you do, whether it's traditional mele, contemporary mele, or grooves, make it your best. But that was not heard. Only this was heard. The intent was not heard. So very quickly they took it off the radio station. On, in November, the month of November, they have what is called Record Day in Japan. And they're going to be featuring this CD, Record Day, once a year in Japan. And they sent me the music again and said, guess what? We're going to be featuring Native Grooves. <laughs> I was in total shock. But I love this music. It reflects a whole different part of me. And remember, we are artists. And what do artists do? Create. We create. And you know, if you did the same painting 100 times, somebody might buy the first one, but who can buy the, who can buy the rest? Because you, you did that already. And so it's another kind of inspiration for songwriters, what we did yesterday, we need to do a little different today and a little bit more different tomorrow. Because, you know, I always use this story. What farmer takes a seed, puts it in the ground, pours water on it and says, now I don't want you to grow. I want you to stay that seed in the ground forever. 
No, that's not how it's done. And I like to use this story, preservation and perpetuation. There's a big difference. They're not the same words. You know, like how you make a big pot of jelly and you put them in the bottle, you cover them and you put them on the shelf. That's preservation. Perpetuation is when you take that thing and you share it and you make it grow and you multiply it and we all take responsibility for that kuleana. That's a little bit different because I think both have good value but I like to be on perpetuation side. I think that's where, I, because I'm the farmer that puts a seed in the ground and waters it and waits for it to grow and then sprout leaves and then flowers and then fruit. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. And that's the kind of person I've always been. So you can see how that is a reflection on my hakumele because I'm always creating and the foundation of the creation is how I was raised by my grandparents. So all of that strength that comes from the ha o nakupuna o hawaiine, the breath of our ancestors, yeah, that I received through that kind of grooming or raising by my kupuna, now those are the things that I write into these mele. All of these stories are part of the mele that I write. Okay, that was just a little bit. So now that I've said that much, and before I get to the other part, because uh, I'm watching my time and all our time, because half an hour went by already, are there any questions that you'd like to ask me concerning hakumele? So we're going to do that for about 15 minutes, and I'm going to go into the explanation of the next three songs. So you know what's funny? Because I taught here for 13 years at Winwood Community College. And now I'm doing teaching online. Yeah? And so when I say to my students, OK, do you have a question? They're like this. So then I go, anybody? 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 And everybody's like, don't ask me. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. Things haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so haku, the word haku is to braid. It is a lay style. We have Levili, Lehipu'u, Lehaku, Lehili, Lehumupapa. There are so many styles of making Le. But this particular style, Lehaku, is where the term Haku Mele comes from. Haku Le. So, what does the Haku Le do? The weaver of Le's. So, they go and they pick the most beautiful flowers, the beautiful leaves brilliant flowers, fragrant leaves, and they weave them into a lei. What does the hakumele do? We try to find the most beautiful words to describe our inspiration and the emotion that we're feeling, and we weave those words into the poem, which is, at the end, the mele. Now, it does not have to be complicated words. It doesn't have to be 100 verses, if you wanted to, of course, do that. But I like to make my point very clear. My inspiration, I like to be focused with, and that is the way I've written my mele. You know, somebody said to me, or somebody said at a lecture, I was listening in the back, hiding, because yeah, I don't usually like to go and give lectures, and somebody said, you know, Kavai Kapu Okalani Hewitt, 
he can tell you the whole legend in four verses of a song. Yeah. And in my mind, I was thinking, thank you. That's not easy to take this whole epic story and weave it into four or five verses. No, it's not easy. So how do I do that? Experience. You know, it takes years and years and years of experience. If you're going to start writing music today, my kai, I shall support you. But remember, you just started today. I started at fourth grade. And I've been journeying on this path with the help of parents and teachers. So that's a lot of ike acquired over lots of years. So when somebody comes to see me, and they say, I need a song for this. And I say, wait, give me five minutes. And I come back with the song. Yeah, that's how that works. Why? Because, first of all, I don't compose in English. I write in Olelo Hawaii. And as I'm writing the words, the melody comes at the same time. I don't, they're not separate with me. Yeah? Poetry and music comes at the same time. I don't sit down and think, okay, I'm going to write a poem to No, that's not how I do it. I may, different, I may be different from other people, and everybody has their own talent and their own kuleana within hakumele. Not mine to say anything about. i only going to talk about my style. So that's how I do it. It's like every morning I go for a walk and I take my cell phone and I'm singing and composing music along the way. Then when I come home, I get my ukulele and I play it and then I record it onto my computer. Who does that? I don't know, I do. And these songs that you hear on this CD were all written that way. What, what brings it all together for me is inspiration that is called ulukau. Ulukau comes from the aumakua, ultimately the akua. So whether it's for my grandchildren or somebody that came crying to me because they need a song right away, I take it all to na kupuna. So kahe aku no au na kini kupuna na aumakua meke akua. So I take it all to the aumakua, the kupuna, and God. And I ask for the inspiration. And when I'm done with my prayer, the ike comes. So I'll share with you a story. It's a kind of a cute story. So I was working at the Royal. So after I left Winwood College, I went to work at the Royal Lahaina Resort. I put them on silent and still going. <laughs> oh, this kind of high tech stuff. So anyway, after I left here, because as a lecturer, yeah, I wasn't getting paid a lot back in 1978 or 79 when I started. And I was not only working here, I was a school teacher in the women's prison as well as teaching school on Moloka'i. So I had a full deck of cards on my table. And that lasted for 13 years, teaching at three places. Well, anyway, so <clears throat> when I was, I left here to work in the hotel that paid me $750 an hour. Why would I not leave? So OK, I went to work there, but still in music, still in music. Well, anyway, one night, these two entertainers came to see me, these two women who were Hawaiian, but they had lived most of their lives in California, had come back home and wanted to play the local circuits. So one night, I was you know, directing my show and everything, and uh, they, they appeared and wanted to talk to me. So at the end of the show, I sat down, and they looked like they were crying. And I said, what's wrong? They said, well, 
we were just criticized by these musicians and they told us, you sound like you guys are howlies and you guys need to get back to California. And I just looked at them and I said, really? And she started crying and she said, yeah. And I said, oh, I'm sorry that happened. How can I help you? And she said, uncle, we need to make a name for ourselves here in Hawaii. I said, well, that's good. That comes with hard work. You take what those people said, make that your challenge, but also make that your inspiration to make yourselves better. But you can help us. I said, how is that? Write us a song. I said, wait, give me five minutes. I went to my room. I came back. I said, here, bring it. you got a tape recorder. Let's write this down. That song was, Masheri, Masheri, Eya ho ivau, je t'aime, je t'aime, te tiare, o o e ka ia, e te tiare. That song, they recorded it. They lost by one point for Song of the Year that year at the Hokus. But inspiration comes in so many, many different ways. It was my willingness to help them, and I really wanted to help them. Uh, the group was called Hawaiian Heart, and uh, they recorded um, I think they were the first to record Akahi Kuleana Akapiko also. So for me, yeah, that's the way it is. Okay, good answer, thank you. Anybody else? <laughs> Yes. From 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 songwriting to what is that? <laughs> hakumele. Um, it's the same. Hakumele. So, songwriting, and and again, you know, it's a complete package. For some people they can only do the poetry. Then they go to someone to do the music. Yeah. And then they have what is called a paka, which means after they do the songwriting, they take it to someone who can make sure all your grammar is correct. Then they take it to the musician and they put it to music. I'm like the quadruple threat. I can do the poetry, I can correct them myself, I can put them to music, I can dance the hula, I can do everything, so yeah. <laughs> so that's what I mean by a complete package. Well, and that's an interesting uh, advantage because you know, one of the things is also as someone who teaches hula, you know, it seems to be an advantage as you're writing it, not only do you hear it and know what you're thinking about. Not only that, the timing. The timing is so very, very important. Because I was trained in the hula, writing music, writing mele was very easy in the sense that I already had the timing. So it is. Now, I didn't call myself the triple or the quadruple threat. Somebody else called me that. What do I call myself? Kavai Kapo Kalani Hewitt. To everybody I'm known as Tutu, and that's good enough. That's the only title that I feel very comfortable with, yeah? I, like I said, I see myself as nothing other than that. Somebody said to me, you're very famous. I said, who? <laughs> I just love being me and love teaching, yeah? And no matter what I do, it's about sharing that experience and, of course, that knowledge, yeah? yeah. Yes, go ahead. No, I can tell you that story. <laughs> so I started off dancing hula. Because, of course, I loved hula. And then I would go out and perform. 
Then I would pick up my ukulele and write music and sing for my dancers. But it was very simple stuff. But when I first started going out, it was traditional music. Very simple stuff, right? Well, at that time, a very respected kupuna who was very knowledgeable yeah, in things Hawaiian, Auntie Alice Namakelua, would come to your performance, yeah, and she'd sit in the audience. And oh my God, if you were singing the words wrong, she'd walk up with her cane and she would start. And I saw that happen one time and I said, oh, hell no. I am going to only perform my own music and my own hula from this day forward. So she was a great, great inspiration. I appreciate her for doing that and I appreciate her for pushing me forward to do everything on my own, yeah? So it was that kupuna, yeah? And today, you try pokwad musician, they pick up the ikare, maybe they're slapping you with it, but in those days, none of us did a thing. We just accepted their criticism, their cri uh, correcting us. We never answered back to anybody. That was our age. We listened. If they said, you're singing the word wrong, pa'akawaha, ho'olohe. So that you learn. Yeah. That's how you're going to learn. You're not going to learn by answering back. So that's exactly what I did. So I have to give her plenty mahalo yeah, for that. Yeah. And then you had a question. So, on that note, here, come hold this for me. So, there is, you know, to me, hakumele is about sharing. Hakumele is not about keeping everything for myself. Remember now, this great word, aloha. I believe that God has blessed my life with aloha. He has given me all this inspiration, and I am able to write the music. But it doesn't end with me. Like, it was shared with me, I share it with other musicians. So the arrangements of the songs come from the musicians. The melody comes from me. The poetry comes from me. So again, it goes back to that symbol of a lay of all these things being connected. So they are in this with me, not separate from me. So let me tell you how it starts. So I, I am out walking near my home. And I'm not a great musician. Is there a word for a melodist or whatever? Not a musicianist, but a melodist. Somebody that's good at melodies. Very simple melody. So I'm walking. And it first starts while I'm singing to myself. Then I go home and I pick up my ukulele. And I go, Hey, beautiful, oe. So lovely, kuumaka, kei kea kula, aya no owe. 
ikaheke onapua leilani hi ile mauno iku poli hi ialo me ke aloha so I'll record in my garage band me simply doing that. And then what will happen is I'll get a call. That call is from Mr. Sean Na'awau. And he says to me, and he'll say to me, Uncle, yeah, I need a song. And I said, OK, fast, slow, medium. He goes, anything, just send anything to me. So I said, oh, OK. So I sent him that song. And this is how the inspiration yeah, is shared amongst us all. So this is his arrangement of that song. song. So when I went to school at the University of Hawaii, Hilo, um, I got a bachelor's degree in education before I came here to teach school. And my aunt and teacher at that time, Emma DeFries, sent me to Kona to learn hula from Auntie Iulani Luahine. And they were cousins and were all related but at that time, being a young person, you know, so I went. I went to Kona to learn from Auntie Iulani. And she would be at the stairs of Iulani Palace, yeah? And she'd see me walking up, and at the gate, she would start to sing. Ava puhi pala o ka ua noe. A e ia no mea u. I ka poli o 
Ke aloha. Then she do the chorus. E ku u aloha e. And this was my part. E yo. That's the answer, right? Then she would go. Au he ala oe. And I would go. E i a no vau. A huli a kua. I a oe. That's what she used to greet me with for my hula lesson. What teacher greets you like that for hula? Iulani Luahine did. And because of that, I always felt this affinity to the ginger blossom. So one of my granddaughters, her name is Kulei Avapuhi Okalani, to capture that memory of Auntie Iulani Luahine who was deemed the finest exponent of the hula tradition. And then her greeting me with this beautiful song for my hula lesson. So this song is for that memory and for my granddaughter, Kule of Apuhi Okalani. So to go back to your question, that's how it's all connected. It's not just me. You know, it's like Kale. There are several components of the inspiration. And I think that's part of my success as a hakumele, that I'm not the me, me, me. You know, the iPod, the iMac, the iPhone, the I, I, I. No, I'm not from gen generation. I'm from the share, 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 share generation, where we work together for the outcome of, of course, the things that we do. So can I make a quick comment sure. about so it's funny because this is one of the songs when I, when I read it. So this, some of them have explanation, yeah? And it's funny because when you have a language background, or I guess even more than a language background, a background in mele, yeah? And you read it and you look at words, there's cues that you can look for. And I read this, the words, and to a non-speaker, they may read this and say, this is a love song. Like a, 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 like a song for a, lo like a lover. And I read this, I just read the words, and I said, this is not, this is like a, and I actually thought either a grandchild or a child, and there's cues in there. One of the cues for me was when it references, when it uses the, when it talks about hi'ilei maunoi ku'upoli, yeah, a lei that's there near my bosom, and hi'ialo me ke aloha. Hi'ialo is, that's the way you carry children. Yeah, so when I hear that, I'm like, ah, oh, this is not a love, this is talking, hi'alo is this, yeah? And there's like, olelo no eo, which this is, maybe he may even be playing on this, we can, he's here, but there's an olelo no eo, and it was actually the name of our album, my group's album, and it's hi'ikua ai hi'alo. And hi'ikua is the realm of our ancestors, that's where they come from. Ai ai hi'alo is... So what that uh, Olelo no Eau is saying, the past is in the future, yeah? So if you have a, a connection to Olelo no Eau, you can also listen to this song. And now, when he said that there is Iolani Luahine, and I just got chicken skin kind of all over my body. But when you, when you hear the reference, for me, this song makes perfect sense. Because what did he talk about? Who did he have Aloha for, the reason for the Ava Puhi? Iolani, yeah, because of their relationship. Now, I didn't know that, but I'm familiar with Olelo no Eo enough to know Hi'ikua Aya Hi'ialo, which means our past is in our future, in our children. So this song is almost an embodiment of that because he's saying Hi'ikua Iolani Luahine, yeah? Now that knowledge is past Hi'ialo and cared for in the future. So... I mean, if you have a little bit of that kind of background, that's why when I read the words, like, beautiful. As soon as you said that, I was like, I knew it. I knew it was a, not a, a lover. I knew it was a grandchild or a But child. you know, with my melee, there's always going to be more secrets in there because that's part of the kauna of a melee. Yeah? You're weaving all of these thoughts, all of these emotions, all of these inspirations, and all of this knowledge. So there's always going to be one part of the melee, as I said earlier, that is kept in the heart of the composer forever yeah. and ever, a mauloa, 
that's just the way the tradition works. Yeah, absolutely. That's the way I was taught by my kupuna. And like I say, how do I teach this? I cannot teach this, but you can come and listen to the lecture. You can ask me questions. You can follow my mele. You can use my mele as a kind of a structure to follow. But how do you do it? Uh, you got to learn to pray. That's how you do it. It's about building a relationship with the spirits. Yeah? The uhane of our kupuna, our aumakua, and with God. Because if you cannot feel that in the mele, then I haven't done a good job. If you, you're not inspired by the melody and the words, then I need to go back to the drawing board. And hopefully this mele, and this is another mele that's going to be released. And before I, you look at the words, I'll play it. So that song starts the same way, it's just a walk and me and my ukulele singing. That's how it all begins. So when I'm done, and I come home and record it on my um, garage band, and then I get a call from Mr. Sean Na'o'o again. And he goes, I really like the first song, but I think maybe if you can send another one, I can compare the two. So then I send him this song. And then you heard the outcome of how he redid it. So I said, fabulous, right? But then he goes, well, I'm not really sure which one I want to record. So maybe if you send me a third song, then I can listen to that third song, and maybe I can decide what I'm going to do. So I'm going to play for you that third song, and again, it goes like this. Hey, kupua. Payanaha O Maui Kaulana Kanahana Mahavaine Eo Mai Eo Mai E Maui Well, I had written this song a long, long time ago. And a couple years ago, 
I went to visit one of the Punanaleo programs in Kona. <clears throat> Makamoku Okeave, Big Island of Hawaii, and all the little kamali'i put on a little ho'ike for me. And I sat there, I was with my own mo'opuna and my daughter, and they started singing all of these songs, and I told my daughter, I think I wrote these songs. <laughs> and she goes, what? I said, I think I wrote the songs that they're singing. Come to find out, years ago, one of my students was a Montessori educator for the Montessori programs in Hawaii. And every year she would conduct these conferences with uh, the different Montessori preschools, which included the Punanaleo. And every year she would teach one of my songs. And I was like, oh my God. And sure enough, this song was one of those songs. And I sat there and, yeah, this is my song. So this is, again, the third song I gave him. Hekupua kupayanaha umawi. November, yeah? But other people always uh, call me and ask me if I could do music for them. And of course, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it's all part of the sharing and the extension of being that person that can do that. If you can do that, share it, yeah? Don't keep it all for yourself. That doesn't make sense. If you are given a gift, you're given a gift for a special reason, and you take that gift and you share it with others. Yeah? That's what my kupuna nalako no e aumayana iya u kama hele hele anake kahi ke kahi meke aloha. That's the things and that's the way that they talk to me. So I understand we end 12:45, so I'll use the last part of class to answer more questions. Yeah, to give you an opportunity. Oh my God! I'm so happy to hear their questions. <laughs> yes. Hardest thing. What is the hardest thing? I actually don't think, for me. Now I can only speak for me. So. People may have difficulty with the olelo. You know, I just saw this Facebook little controversy about somebody who had taken an English song, wrote it in Hawaiian. Well, for me, I don't take anyone's English song and I don't translate it for anyone into the olelo Hawaii because the thoughts are different the reflections are different. The inspirations will be different. 
But for some people who don't speak Olelo Hawaii and want to do a mele in the Olelo Hawaii, my advice is take a class, become proficient in the language, and then haku your own mele. That would be the best advice. It may take years, <clears throat> but through those years, you will appreciate the process and that you did it yourself. Um, again, with structure, now, spoken language, grammar, poetry, they're all uniquely different. The language that you're learning in school, proper grammar, may kai. No kawaha o ko umau kupu na ko olelo Hawaii. Na lako no e hanai maya na iya o ika olelo. My language came from the mouth of my grandparents. They raised me with that language. I know, uh, can hone, well, one hono lako, makaili or wai pau, kolako aina kulia nakela, mahaiku. We were raised in Haiku Valley, like in a time warp. <laughs> and that's how I learned all of these things, being raised by them there. Focus is also important. You cannot write about 500 things in one song. Write about one thing and reflect on that one thing. So there, there are so many things, yeah? It would take years for me to come up here and teach a class to work with people because it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in one lesson or one lecture. It happens over a long period of time and it's something that you really have to work towards, yeah? I'm willing to help anybody um, in their translation. I will sit with them. But at the end, if I have to translate this whole song from English to Hawaiian for you, that Hawaiian song becomes mine. Because I went in there. So it's different. So for people who are natural at doing that and want to do that, mai ka'i, imua. For me, I know I cannot because I will see it uniquely different, write it uniquely different, and then I go look at the melee and go, oh, I think that's my song. Yeah. I mean, that's what's gonna happen. So I understand that, I really, really do. Yes. So you know, I always say this, and I inspire people with this Olelo, olelo no Eel. I'm not a banana in the bunch. I'm an orange on a cherry tree. You know what that means? I don't follow nobody. I take the ike that came from my kupuna, and that's always my inspiration. Whether a kupuna, a makua, or Pio wants to record my music, I'm going to share it with you. But I going to follow the way I was taught. And that's pono, yeah? That came from my kupuna. So when I write the music, yeah, I write about those things, but I find myself more and more now composing music to educate. So I, I, I will sing you like some of the songs I write, and I write these songs for my grandchildren because I have a lesson. I want them to learn something. And so the best way to impart that lesson, oh, something went puka and fall down. So.
doing that, and then I also teach Olelo Hawaii'i. And uh, one of the songs that I recently taught my class was a Hana Ikalei. And of course, very simple melodies, but I'm teaching my class something. So it goes like this. Hana i kalei, i kalei o Hawaii. E hana i kalei na ni e mena pua o Hawaii. E vili i kalei, i kalei le hua e. E vili i kalei na ni e i kalei vili e. E haku i kalei, i kalei la i. E haku i kalei na nie, i kalei haku. So what was the intent? To teach a simple melody, to teach correct pronunciation through music, and to teach tradition, to teach about the different styles of lays. The first song was to teach the alphabets. Now to exclude Okina and Kahako, you have to include them. They become the alphabets. So I'm working on so many different projects. Here's another song. There's so many, trying to remember all of them, but colors, yeah, teaching colors. And uh, is there another yellow folder in there? Yeah, that one. So, you know, I work and I teach about colors. So I make little booklets. And melanuka vai ho'olu'u about colors. Ula ula kalehua. Mele mele kapua mamane. Poni poni kanani o ola'a. Polu kapa'u o hi'iaka. A kalaka opua roselani. So the mele goes, see if I can remember. Ooh, mm, wrong key again. Ula, ula, kalehua, mele, mele, kapua, mamane. What are the words? <laughs> I need the words because uh, there's so many, but these are songs that I write. Again, because I want to teach people the things I learn. Yeah, makuva kama iki iko unohana me kumaukupuna. The things I learned as a child with my grandparents. I want to reflect that to anyone that wants to come and learn. So hopefully one day I can get a job back here as a teacher. I reverting, yeah. <laughs> I went from here to the bright lights and now maybe coming back here. Yeah. So that I can so I can go and um, do that. And and I wanna I wanna can, can you hold this? I wanna kinda end by playing you this one song. And since I since I showed you this song, I'm gonna show you the book Polu Kapa'u Ohiyaka. Do you know the story about the Pa'u Ohiyaka? The pa'u o hiyaka is 
a very small blue flower. Not pohuehue. Pohuehue is big. Pauhiaka is li'i li'i no ika maka ke ike. He pua maika inani no, lahi lahi no. Very gentle, soft flower. And the story is, when Hi'iaka was born, the sister of Pele, she was carried in the form of an egg in the poli, near the heart of Pele. And Pele carried this egg wherever she went. Then one day, as Pele likes to write, from Mauka she like go makai. She wants to touch the water. So she went down carrying this egg. But before she went into the water, she put this egg on the sand. And then she went right into the ocean. Well, the day was very hot. The heat was so intense. And that heat was on that egg. Well, it opened. And out came Hi'iaka as a baby. Well, there was no shade. And as the legend goes, from beneath the sand grew this beautiful vine with these beautiful cord silk blue flowers that made a pa'u, a covering over Hi'iaka Ikapoli Opele. But this is about magic. And within that one day, she grew into a beautiful woman. That story is in this song. Can you play them that song? Yeah. It is number blah, 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 kapua pa'u Hi'iaka. Number five. And like again, because you know our lecture is kind of winding down, would take me a whole year to talk about this CD and explain to you all the secrets within the words. So it's called Kapua Pa'u o Hi'iaka. So as she was sleeping on the sand, she was born from that egg, and these beautiful vines came. They covered her body to protect her from the heat of the sun, and that flower became known as Pa'u Ohi'iaka. And this is Hiiaka Ikapolia Opele. And she was cared for, she was carried near the heart of Pele. And this love, this melee, this song, this Hali Alia goes out to you. So answer, my beloved my sweetheart, 
to this lay, this adornment for you. Pa'u o hi'iaka blossom. And again, the inspiration, my children, my grandchildren, because I see them in so many things. And I want them to remember these stories, to remember these emotions of love, of Pele and her sister Hi'iaka, my love for them my love, my memories, being raised by my grandparents. These are the things that I feel are important today. Okay, I'm gonna see one more song then we pow. <laughs> I gotta go back to the color song because I'm mad that I forgot the words. Okay. So, very simple song about colors and trying to teach children. Ula ula, kalehua, mele mele kapua, mama ne, poni poni, kanani o ola apolu, kapau ohi iaka. Lei Hawaii ina pua, Olino ina vai ho olu. A kalaka o pua, Roselani alani ka ilima, Lei aloha ke o ke o kapua kukui. Ahina hina kalau hina hina lei Hawaii ina pua olino ina vai ho olu o ma o ma o kama o hauhele ele ele kahua o kama ile maku e kalepo. A oku u aina no ka aina na mea uluvehi Lei Hawaii i na pua Olino i na vai ho olu Akala alani ke o ke o ahina hina oma oma o piha ke au inavai ho olu iluna ilalo ina mea apau nani i kamaka ke i ke aku ke anu e nu e kau i kaleva ula ula. Mele mele, poni polu, ele ele, akala alani, ke o ke o, ahina hina, oma oma o, lei Hawaii, ina pua kalehua, ke kukui, ke kupaua, 
Ho mai ka i ia, e noho maane i, i ka malu o ke au, i lana mali e. Ula ula, mele mele, poni polu, ele ele, akala alani, ke o ke o, ahina hina, oma oma o, mai po ina oi i ka maku e. Maku e kanani o ku aina No ka aina na mea uru beri beri Who wrote that? See, you need those two together And how come they don't teach the other verses? Yeah, because all we got in school is the first part, yeah? Unreal Okay, let's um Let's take a picture. Mahalo again. Kawai Kapu for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's do a, a quick picture. Should we do it in here or should we go outside? <laughs>